beautiful people welcome to my channel my name is Georgia for those of you who are new and to my regular subscribers welcome back so as you could tell from the title we are gonna do a recap and a review of love and marriage DC season 1 episode 3 titled no new friends oh my god Ashley where did they find you <laughs> I'm telling you Ashley Ashley aggressive Ashley as she calls herself so we left off the episode last episode where everyone is still at dinner at Monique's house and um it so happens that we get on to we're talking about winter and the fact that Chris met up with Kevin winter's husband and um, he was telling Chris how much he loves her and he doesn't understand what happened but winter already told us the man has been gone for six months he said he'll be back in a day or so and she haven't seen him in six months so now we're at the dinner table and um of course curiosity you bring up the conversation people are gonna ask questions she mentioned that she has never seen where he lived um now we find out that he didn't have a car he had her car driving around and she had to repo the car um and that she served him divorce papers and we all know that it was done electronically just before he met up with uh for lunch with chris so uh ashley took the opportunity to go at her and Irena is just enjoying it monique said listen if she wasn't going on a trip the following morning she would have um jumped in and tried to help but she's like they're grown they can handle this and <laughs> this is so she left them to deal with it i think not to say winter deserved it but when monique brought out the ball with the games for them to play they didn't even get a chance to play the game because we had winter clutching on to the to the ball and having the conversation across the table with ashley i mean of course ashley was throwing shade but she has some really valid points like how are you gonna marry somebody that you've never seen where they live you don't know what's going on with your finances or anything and then your um excuses that there was covid happening however you married him during the time of covid in less than a year of meeting him so of course ashley had some valid points then the question that winter asked was is the measure of success having to do with whether you fail or you something she said but the way she said it was yes that is the definition of success the way you're putting it that's how it's supposed to be again ashley tell her look i don't think you're a failure but you just made a bad decision in marrying this man and that's what you need to fess up to you just need to understand that's what you did so you could see the tension across the table with the two at one point um ashley asked her so how are you a relationship expert and you're not in a relationship because because you have one failed marriage and she's like, I understand why. But then the second one, you just jumped into it too quick. And of course, here comes quick. He picks up where Ashley, um, you know, I guess they, they really banter together really well. He picks up where Ashley left. So he's like, it's not just like some place where when you go to a nail salon, you have a nail tech that, that whose nails is never done. A hair stylist whose hair is never done. You go to buy some shoes at a shoe store and the salesperson's shoes look like crap that kind of stuff so you you have to say well wait, wait a minute you know that, that kind of makes sense and it's true what he's saying think about it think about places that you've been who people claim that they're specialists and what they're specializing in it don't seem like um they're actually living up to the image they're supposed to so i get where ashley and quick was coming from with that so, all right, finally they decide. I mean, nobody was helping Winter. I mean, I think Monique tried to help. It wasn't going nowhere because at one point it was just Winter and Ashley, Winter and Ashley, Winter and Ashley. And Chris is to the point where it's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry I brought it up because now they're just coming at her. And he don't know what to do. He's like, it's going way left. And he, they don't know how to bring it back. So that was, that was how dinner ended with those two. So Ashley was really challenging um winter she's like you have one divorce and now you you have one scammer so how are you a, a relationship specialist all right so we leave the dinner we now we have Irena and jamie following there or something and they're going to go work out we find that Irena is an avid runner and she does participate in marathons and stuff like that jamie decides he's going to go run with her 
and she's challenging him to say he can't do more than a mile and then we find out later that he actually was able to run the five miles with her so on their way walking back home they brought up the dinner you know how did you feel about that um Irena asked Jamie how you feel about the questions that that was asked of us and um as far as you know getting into a relationship and Jamie was like in a case like that you should have just plead the fifth don't tell them nothing we don't I don't want to talk about it haven't I taught you anything you know you just don't say anything that's how he said have amnesia so okay while they're walking home um but then Irena said to him but didn't you hear me tell them that I've never caught you He's like, that still don't matter. We just don't want to talk about it. Figure out how not to answer the question because we don't want to talk about it. And then she tells him that she's looking forward to him and the boys going to hang out because she wants him to spend quality time with his sons. You know, she says she didn't have the two-parent household growing up. So the fact that, you know, it's there for her kids, she wants them to experience it and have a good time with their father. So... She said she was looking forward to Jamie, little Jamie, and Jason going to hang out. And then while they were walking home, here comes little Jamie driving up. You know, they had their little banter back and forth. And then he went on his way. So that was the, episode, that, that was the um, scene with Jamie and Irena. Then we have Monique and Chris. We see them. They're packing. They're getting ready to leave for their trip. They have all the kids ready. I think I'm going to take something away from Chris and Monique. The luggage that they were packing, most times I use a hard luggage. But it seems like those um soft luggage with wheels, I think that's better. Because as long as it's durable, of course. You can't buy nothing cheap when you're do, dealing with fabric luggage or soft luggage or nylon or whatever it's called. But um, I think it packs better in the vehicle. You know, when you get to the other side, whoever's picking you up, either you're using an airport shuttle or family members picking you up, I think it's just better for them on the other side. And it just back packs better all around. So I think I'm going to switch out. So thanks for that idea, Monique and Chris. So um, they're in the kitchen talking. And I like the fact that they have um, a healthy, I will call it a healthy conversation in front of the, in front of the kids. Because Chris asked her, he's like, so what did you think about last night? And Monique is like, you telling me to hush, that was not cool at all. And Chris didn't think there was anything wrong with it. But honestly, I think there is. You telling her to hush, that's what you tell a child in front of company. You don't talk down to your wife like that. So they had a nice little banter about that back and forth. And Monique said, you don't ever have to tell me to, sh to hush because it's not like that's ever going to happen. <laughs> so that was a cute little chuckle right there. And then they just went on about getting prepared to travel. She's checking off the itinerary to make sure that they're on time and that they have everything. So their daughter asked, so where are we going to sleep when we get to Africa? And um, they came together and they were playing with her. You could see her little eyes open her face. It's like, oh my God. And so did their, uh, her, little, her brother. They were like, okay, we're going to sleep with the lions. <laughs> they're going to make you a part of their pride. This is Monique telling her daughter. The little girl's about eight or nine. And... Chris was like, yeah, we go, we go sleep in the jungle. You're going to have to poop in the bushes and le use leaps to wipe your <laughs> It was too cute. <laughs> it looked like they like messing with their kids. That's how you got to do it sometimes with them. Love them, but still mess with them a little bit. So that's them. Um, they talked about um, what was going back and forth at dinner. How Chris said how he feel bad that, you know, he felt that, that, the that Ashley was jumping on winter and he didn't like that at all so while they were talking winter calls of course to use her special you know being a specialist in relationships she called to wish them well on their trip and let Monique to tell her Monique to go ahead and enjoy her husband and have a good time on her trip and Chris is in the background just shaking his head like Lord have mercy why this lady don't come off the phone all right so then we have winter and her mom winter's mom came over for coffee or dessert or whatever and she's giving her a, um you know update on the dinner you know she tells her that monique she asked winter's mom asked so how's the house winter's like it's a nice house she's and then winter tells her about the fact that um kevin met up with chris and how he's saying how he missed her and stuff like that and um winter mom apologized to her because according to winter kevin went to winter's mom to you know tell of his intentions and her mom told winter give him a try he might be a little bit older they're supposed to be more settled more established have their head on straight 
by that age at 60 years old so she's like give him a try so she says she feels bad that the relationship didn't work out and she's kind of blaming herself about it um for it so they talked about that for a little while um winter is telling her mom that kevin is obsessed or the other way around the mom is telling winter that kevin is some the other way around but they talked about that for a little while and then we were um off that then we have ashley and irena so ashley is going to the doctor esthetician she's going to the esthetician and she is going to get injections for a honda or remember she was telling monique when they were at lunch in the last episode that you know she don't want to sweat as much so she wants to do botox so she's finally going forward with it she invites Irena to come with her so she could see the procedure she let us know that she has gotten fillers over the past you see she's transparent she's gotten fillers over the past she's had a boob job but her butt is all real Irena let her know that listen we all admire your butt we all want one like it and next time if when I decide to get mine done I want you to come with me so they're in the room talking the doctor did what she had to do and um you know gave her the injection and then they were talking about what to expect how often she needs to get it done she needs to come back in another four to six months to get it done so then the doctor leaves the room and they're talking about dinner Irena in a nutshell told Ashley that um winter that she was attacking winter that winter felt attacked and Ashley was like me I don't think I attacked her. Actually, I felt attacked. She was like, um, you would kind of be a bit aggressive and stuff. But then Ashley took it in stride. She was like, you know what? This lady's not going to come to dinner, sit across from me, tell her her whole life, tell us about her whole life, and don't expect us to have questions, especially when she's married a man that she met during COVID, married him during COVID, found that he, that he ain't, ish and now she's upset so she just have to admit that she got got <laughs> it just some street her i'm sure y'all heard about that if you're in this community you got got girl you got got and you just need to understand that's how it happened that's how it went admit it fix it move on with your life so ashley was not apologizing for coming at her with the questions um let me see what else they talked about um also, she talked about, she said, she is, I feel, Ashley said, I feel that there's something phony about winter. I just can't put my finger on it. There's something about her that gets under my skin. I can't put my finger on it. And then she's like, on that haircut is also getting to me. Because if you guys haven't seen the episode, winter have where she have one side of her head shaved off. And then she puts um, tracks, like she puts um, extensions on the other half so it's long down the i'm saying maybe she's dealing with alopecia but then i kind of because it was kind of bothering me as well so in a couple of these episodes i'm leaning in and i'm looking to see the hairline to see if she actually have edges as they say and she does she have edges on the other side so it is a conscious thing to do with the i guess she's trying to bring a hairstyle in or back in was that ever in but it's winter it's her personality she's showing it off you know that's how fashions get made that's how trends come about people do something different and people follow it so maybe somebody will follow this trend i don't know but it's getting to ash and it's getting on her skin as long as as well as winter's whole persona as she said she's like i don't need no new friends I, I, i'm not feeling her or whatever but i don't know why on earth they clashed from the very first episode she just wasn't feeling her from the episode all right so now we leave um ashley and arena there and we actually have the meet up with jamie and his son so they went to the boxing gym oh i love this segment of this episode so much that is why i love the love and marriage um franchise because they address things that are relevant to us in our communities that you do not see anywhere else and i love the conversation between jamie and quick and the fact that he said to him listen i need help with this i can't do it by myself as i'm you're here for me i'm here for you help me do this and then we have quick having the conversation 
with um little jamie towards the end but then when he has the conversation with jason and then have the conversation with little jamie i'm like wait a minute it seems like little jamie wants to have the career path that jamie is trying to push jason towards he wants jason to be a um dj and he thinks that that um quick could mentor him because according to quick he has a program for inner city, inner city youths where he teach them for free how to be djs and sound engineers and all anything having to do with music so jamie wants that for jason however jason is not interested in it he tell his father right in front of um right in front of quick that's what you want so they just brush it off jamie just brush it off as if he didn't say it and um had quick continue to talk to jason about it but then a little while after that when quick was talking to little jamie you hear little jamie say he admires quick because he's um closer to his age and he is in the field that he wants to be where he hang out with celebrities he parties and stuff and that's what he wants so why not have little jamie steer towards that avenue and let jason do what he wants and as you see in the episode coming up they gave a, a preview he said he don't want to do it. Maybe he could work with Apple. And then his father's like, where you coming from with that? It's possible. It's possible that he could be working with Apple company and do what he wants. Don't limit. Don't limit these kids. Anything they set their mind to, they can do it. So I think Jamie needs to nurture what Jason wants to do and stop pushing him in the direction that he wants. Also, quick mention that he did say in his confessional, I hope this is what Jason wants and not what his father want him to do because that's the worst decision you could be. Do not live vicariously through your kids. Let them make a decision as far as what they want to do through life. You support them, you nurture them, and as long as it makes sense, you help them along. So that was a really, really good conversation that they had with the with the, um, the young men. I'm not going to say boys, with the young men, and they had a good workout session, and that was really good to see. I'm telling you, I don't see this anywhere else. Even in all of the other reality shows before Love and Marriage came forward, I've never seen where you have this conversation with fathers and sons and everything, and it's being highlighted in this franchise. I see it highlighted in Love and Marriage, Huntsville with Martell and his kid, with Marcel and his sons, with maurice and his um son and now i'm seeing it again in love and marriage dc man carlos carlos king you have got the sauce you are about to change the formula for reality tv you're doing it little by little but i see it coming they're still trying to hold on to the drama but you're like no we're gonna do something constructive we're gonna make something of it and we're gonna do some teaching and we are gonna make let us lift our head up and not be so confrontational all the time. I just love it. Keep doing what you're doing, Carlos. All right, I digress. I digress. Let's get back to the review. So now we have um, Winter having a luncheon. She's like, all right, Monique is out of town, so I'm going to take over a little bit. She's my girl. Even though she's gone, there's no reason why we can all meet up. So she invites Tasha which is Monique's new friend. Like I told you in last episode, she used to be Monique's hairdresser and they became a really good friend. So she invites Tasha, she invites Ashley, and she invites Irena. But then after everyone has come together, we find out that the whole luncheon was a way to get to talk to Ashley again. Even Ashley's like, I don't know why I was being summoned to this luncheon. It's not like I, didn't, I don't want to come, but then you know I love my seafood. And it, it as it's at a seafood restaurant, so I'm here. <laughs> so, so okay. She said, the minute I sit down, here they come at me. So Winter kept coming at her regarding. She's like, I didn't like what you said last night about the fact that I didn't know where he lived and I jumped into the man. But she's like, but you didn't. You didn't. You just have to admit that you made a wrong decision and you went down a path that wasn't right. And now you need to get over it. So there was um a time where winter asked ashley so would you consider she said would you consider Irena a friend <laughs> ashley paused paused too long <laughs> Irena was like she's like well i would consider us to be friendly this is ashley speaking 
I would consider us to be associates. We're not friends just yet. And Irena was like, you know what? She is right. I really don't know her that well. We've seen each other around, been around each other, but I really don't know her that well. So I could take that. I need to be around her a little bit longer to see what's going on. But then winter kept coming. I mean, in between the whole banter back and forth, the whole conversation, the whole dialogue, winter kept coming at Ashley and Ashley had to just keep, she just keep pushing it. She's like, you know what? You're saying I was aggressive. So you know what? Just call me aggressive Ashley. <laughs> she went into confrontation. She's like, ooh, let's make this a hashtag. Aggressive Ashley. <laughs> so aggressive Ashley. I don't like that. Mm -mm. I don't want you to be labeled as such because you are not that aggressive. I just think like you said, the fact that um winter annoys you. There's something about it that you can't put your finger on. That upset you, but I'm not going to label you aggressive, Ashley. We'll do it for this episode only, but going forward, I'm not going to do it. Because, girl, I know that your party is going to be turnt when it's your turn to do an event. I could see it already. From the way you and Quick go back and forth, I could see the playfulness between the both of you. But I know your party is going to be. So let me wait till the next episode before I actually give you a hashtag and then we see why we what we come up with. So, all right, towards the end of the episode, we have Tasha now. She has to have an opinion. And Tasha was like, um, you're not a good team player. And in the confessional, Ashley was like, Tasha, why are you here? Where you come from? I'm like, Ashley, you are really earning your hashtag in this episode. But girl, I understand you had to defend yourself a little bit. I know Winter was trying to break you down and you gave it to her you're like listen i apologize if you feel i was being aggressive but i do not apologize for asking the questions that i asked because you're coming with us every time i've been in a room with you every time i've been around you you're talking about this marriage so and you're talking about the situation so of course what else is there to talk about give me something else to talk about and we'll talk about it but until then we're going to be talking about how you made a bad decision in marrying this man and now you need to get out of it and be okay with not being in a relationship with this man so that is where the episode ended the next episode is gonna be good y'all based on the preview we have winter going to lunch with Irena, and even though Irena says she's never caught jamie doing anything or cheating on her we found out that Irena was doing the cheating and she got caught she got caught and you know most men they could cheat all they want but once you cheat on them and they find out they're gone so i think that's why jamie don't want to talk about it because he stuck around jamie stayed even though you know there was infidelity in the marriage who knows if Jamie still, um, if Jamie cheated on her because there was a point where Irena said to Jamie when they were on the walk, she was like, remember what I said at the table that I never caught you. And instead of saying to Irena, there was nothing to catch. He says, um, he said something to the point that made me feel a little bit uncomfortable that yeah, he is doing something out there, but she's just going to ignore it because of her infidelity. But we'll get into that in the next episode and the others going forward. Then again, I told you about Jason and Jamie having a conversation. The fact that he does not want to be a DJ. He wants to work for a major company like Apple. They talked about that. And then we have Quick and um, Quick and Ashley, Irina, and Jamie meeting up. And they're talking about Jamie's and Irina's sex life. They got into the topic. We already know that Jamie don't want anything on display. He just wants everything quiet. Do the girl stuff. Go talk about the girl things, but don't come into the relationship. But that is what the show is about as far as love and marriage. We want to know why is it you stayed together 26 years. You're not going to tell me that there was no infidelity in between. Well, how did you get through it? Because anyway... So yeah, that is the recap and the review. Let me get over to the title. As you guys know, my notebook. Uh, that's the recap and the review of Love and Marriage DC. Season 1, Episode 3. Titled, No New Friends, No New Friends, No New Friends. Nah. 
I'll give up the singing. No new friends. All right, guys. I thank you for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment if you wish. And until next time, be sure to take care of yourselves and your family. Thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.